Tearing through the room like an F5 tornado of hyperactive joy was Taylor Hawkins, my brother from another mother, my best friend, a man for whom I would take a bullet. Upon first meeting, our bond was immediate, and we grew closer with every day, every song, every note that we ever played together. I am not afraid to say that our chance meeting was a kind of love at first sight, igniting a musical twin flame that still burns to this day. Together, we have become an unstoppable duo, on stage and off, in pursuit of any and all adventure we can find. We were absolutely, we are absolutely meant to be, and I am grateful that we found each other in this lifetime. That's in the conclusion of Dave Grohl's book, The Storyteller, a, a book that I just finished not two weeks ago. And Foo Fighters, a band that I saw live for the first time in 2019, not even three years ago at this point, just before the pandemic started. Taylor Hawkins, dead at age 50, drummer of the Foo Fighters, absolute legend, not just, I think, to the world of music and drumming, but somebody that I absolutely extraordinarily looked up to from a very young age. I have distinct memories of listening to my first ever Foo Fighters album, In Your Honor, at camp in the summer of 2005. My friend uh, had the CD, I had a CD player, and Taylor always stood out to me and just interviews and everything past that he seemed like the most fun loving in it for the right reasons in it for the music type of guy and uh, as we already see the world of music reacting to this loss from tom morello to the band themselves giving a statement on social media saying the foo fighters family is devastated by the tragic and untimely loss of our beloved taylor hawkins his musical spirit and infectious laughter will live on with all of us forever. Our hearts go out to his wife, children, and family, and we ask that their privacy be treated with the utmost respect in this unimaginably difficult time. As, as, as we see that outpouring of love from everybody, it reminds me of the passing of, like, Betty White and uh, Bob Saget in the sense that, you know, people have so many kind words to share. Like, I've just, I've, I've never heard a story about Taylor Hawkins that started like, well, you know, uh, he was kind of, you know, not the nicest guy, or he was mean to his fans, or anything like that. It was just always kind words. And knowing Dave Grohl to be uh, the nice guy rock star that he is, the guy who can go on a show like Hot Ones and just absolutely win over the entire world, Taylor was like that too. He was right there by Dave's side. He's been in the band since the 90s. He was the former drummer for uh, Alanis Morissette. I mean, the man is a legend, and I almost said a living legend, but at this point, it's, of course, 50 years. It's just, it's it's, it's unfathomable. It's, it's, it's unfathomable. I know so many people around that age, and you just, you never expect them to be gone. And... I know that with Foo Fighters being one of the, if not the biggest rock band in the entire world, I can't imagine how so many of you must be feeling right now. And I would love to hear your memories. If you have a show or a time or a chance encounter that you want to share, let, let all of us know in the comments because I feel that Taylor was just one of those people who had it, man. No matter who he was working with, whether it was Dave Navarro, side projects galore. I mean, the dude was just all in. He had the energy. And then to die out of nowhere while on tour with the Foo Fighters in South America, giving his final performance on March 20th, just not even a week before his passing at Lollapalooza, Argentina, 2022. I just, having watched back that performance now of Everlong and just seeing Taylor playing those drums and Dave Grohl saying this. So look, I don't want, I don't say goodbye. I don't like to say goodbye because I know that we'll always come back. There's so many things in this life that feel like they can be unresolved or like weirdly, darkly ironic or like they're predicting the future and just the emotion that you can sense in this performance of one of their oldest hits ever long. 
it's something that I think now is always going to be remembered very fondly, but also bittersweetly because it was Taylor giving it his all one last time on an absolutely iconic song to a massive crowd of tens of thousands, if not more people. When I sing along with you, sing it. And to see the crowd giving so much back to the band, so much, just I'm sure every person that was there counts themselves lucky at this point to have been there, to have witnessed this now final performance of a musical legend, Taylor Hawkins, now passed at the age of 50, which is still so unfathomable. And to even think about the potentially dark future of the Foo Fighters, does this mean the end for them? This isn't the time to speculate or think or worry about that, obviously, but I'm sure it's something that's on some fans' minds and heavy on probably even the members like Nate and Dave and everybody else like Rami and Pat and the band. I can't imagine how everyone is feeling, how anyone is dealing. And if anybody knows anything about the Foo Fighters, you know that band had a very tight-knit bond. They were a band that hung out together before the shows, they jammed together, all of their families hung out. And again, I just, sometimes it's the weirdest timing, man. Like I'd been listening to some Foo Fighters and I had just finished this book and now, you know, late night, March 25th into March 26th, Taylor Hawkins has passed away. So, anyways, guys, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go and uh, call it there. But uh, I hope you guys are well, and uh, rest in peace, Taylor.